Ta-da. There we are. Here we are. Are we? We are here. We are here. Welcome. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, homie? Where is here? <laughs> where uh, I don't know. No matter where you go, there you are. Seriously. Yep. Ilmarin. Do, do, Always do, with do, the, do, 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 do. the faithful. That's a we'll, we'll see how many old timers that we that really know what that where that quote came from. No matter where you go, there you are. I tell you, I don't know what you've done to the to, to, to my outlook, but I live in a gray world now, John. I it's I I don't know if it's because of the way it comes because it changes the color on mine. I it makes me yeah. more red whenever I bring you in. So I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know what it is. It's definitely odd because in the in the, the Skype bit beforehand, I, I seem to look normal. Yeah. Oh well, that's okay. Yeah, because you're you're perfectly normal in Skype, so I don't know why it. I'm. I don't know. There must be some kind of weird setting I'm not doing or something. Quote unquote perfectly normal. Uh, who knows? Mm. That's me. I'm 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 hard to hit from long range. It's like I stay I stay outside of short range and it becomes very difficult to target me. <laughs> I should get the that plus one to hit though for being an oversized target. There, maybe you're not as gray. You're a little warmer now. As you wish, Sean. It doesn't matter to me. I just it seems like for a long time it was perfectly fine and then last week I'm... I I'm went having a little bit of a problem here. I'm going to uh, mute myself, and you can take Thanks. over for a minute. I gotta go take care of a problem. I got it. All right. Good luck, John. All right, All right everybody. So uh, while John is out uh, saving the world, let's uh, let's welcome in Ilmarin and Hobby Habit. Glad to see you guys are here. Hopefully, we'll get some more people in the chat here in just a few minutes. Um, been a uh, from what I understand, it's been a really busy week around Cav HQ. John and I were chatting a little bit ahead of time, and you know, just uh, the, it's a lot of it's the smell. It's almost like fall, like like that really cold, crisp part of fall when you pull up out in the neighborhood and somebody's broke out their fireplace or their chimney, and you got that wafting smell of burning wood. I think it might smell like that at Cav, Cav HQ lately. Kind of the the smell of burnt MDF or lasered MDF, as the case may be. Ah, so yeah, badgers are exciting. Um, you know, John, I think I, I didn't get a chance to catch a stream last night, but I understand I understood he had some of the Kodiaks and Mambas there for people to uh, enjoy the look of. Um, can't wait to get my hands on my own order. I did finally get that made. Um, excited to 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 get some models put together. I uh, I appreciate everybody that came in and helped me on Monday, um, come to a decision about the colors from my, and, and, and the painting style from my rock force. So I've got those, got that idea in my head. Now I just need to, I just need to sit down and kind of tweak my original force design. I, I, after watching Todd and, uh, Hugh play, I realized my rock force was not really up to snuff. There just wasn't enough electronic warfare combat there. I, I didn't have enough potential. So I got, got some redesigns to, Going there, you know, I really wish, I really wish there was a little bit more, a few more ECM options for my rock. I know there's a, people have told me there's a helicopter out there, an open helicopter. I should take a look at. I I need to read all those little sort of civilian or whatever those are, those generic designs that John put out. Might be a modeling opportunity there, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. I, so here's my take, right? I, maybe I'll just proxy the cons. You know, I, I just really don't like the curved look of them. So I don't know. I'll find, I'll kit bash something, right? And call it a con. Maybe it'll have treads. Can we make a con with treads? I'd be happy with that. Yeah. So see, now I don't have them memorized, Ilmarin. So help me, help me know what that Vanguard is that you're talking about there. What does that thing do? Is it a, is it a, is it a cab or a vehicle? First of all. Razors are good con proxies. Now the razor is not a bad looking little mech. I painted up a couple of those for the school buses, those yellow fellows, and they worked out okay. It's the new vehicle model. Well, that's that's me sold. 
I have yet to see. Uh, eh, there might be a vehicle or two out there that I don't that I don't really like the look of, but it's it's few and far between. So yeah, um, razors are pretty good. Something kind of small and light along those lines. You know, to be honest with you, I I don't know. I need to sit down and just look through the available models and find me a little tiny torso that I like the looks of, and then I can just tweak it out to be whatever else. What does a con come equipped with? Does it have uh, LBGs? I think it's got laser bolt guns, doesn't it? I seem to remember it's got pew pew arms. Maybe I'm wrong. So anyway, yeah, I I need to I need to sit down and you I know mean, rethink my uh, my force just a little bit. I mean, I need some way to get those uh, reapers to deliver those heavy guided missiles without having to take an action to target lock so they can turn on all their juicy computers. Vanguard is the best min max, uh, the best ECM in the game. Man, I got to look this vehicle up. I guess I need to, I I need to sit down and just scroll through the whole, um, you know, the whole rock, the list of rock vehicles and tabs. I think I hear the sound of a John approaching. What do you mean, last John approaching? <laughs> oh Lord, Uber James, don't leave him alone on the mic. John, I am back. Do you need me to bail? Ta -da -da -da. Do, 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 do you need bail? No, nah, nobody was killed in the in the last twenty minutes. No matter what they say. All right, sorry. Did, did you tell them what was going on? I didn't. I didn't get into it because oh. it, it's, it's just yeah. just as we were getting ready to go. Of course, the studio is upstairs, so I'm the only one here right now. So just as we're getting ready to go on live, I hear somebody banging on the front door outside. Bam, bam, bam. Hey, hey, is anybody there? I'm like, oh, whatever, just ignore them. But they went on for like five minutes. And finally I said, okay, I got to go look and see what it is. Right before we went on. Some guy has pulled up into our parking lot, parked next to my truck, and his car is dead. So he's wanting to jump start. And I'm like, how did you pull up next to my car? So anyway, I told him I should call a tow company. <laughs> mm. All right. And I told him to be quiet. You're making too much noise. Yeah, serious. <laughs> oh, so John, we were just talking about how you need to give us a con alternative. We need either a re-sculpt of the con or we need a variant that we can kit bash something out of because Somebody in the audience, I don't know who it was, some 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 person in the audience said they didn't like the way cons looked, and I'm just trying to satisfy the customers. I see. Well, if we were to do a re-sculpt, it would just be to clean up the detail on it. I actually think the con is pretty cool looking. So, uh, too many curves, John. No, angular. No. Calves are angular. That's the, that's the curves. It, the con is very rock looking. Sorry. Mm -hmm. so. So, so, I was thinking... So one of the problems I have is there aren't a lot of ECM models in the rock that I really care for. And so somebody said something just as you were coming back up the stairs, it sounded like. And and I thought to myself, you know, as long as we're not playing a tournament, you know, I, I could, instead of taking ECM, I could just spend those points that I would spend on that and buy pilots, right? Just buy, you know, veteran or maybe even an ace pilot. That's pretty expensive. There's just, there's another way around that problem, right? If I want pluses to hit, I could spend the points elsewhere as long as, again, we're not playing in a tournament or, or it would have to be a tournament where the, where the, the, the tournament organizer allowed such things. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could there are add other stuff ways up. To skin the yeah, cat. you can add stuff up on there. Generally, you know, as a rule between the two of you, it's kind of like infantry. Um, you know, if right. you play with the points, you know, you can end up adding a lot of stuff to a lot of different models. Mm -hmm. But then it turns into a whole lot more of tracking keeping track of what's what's new or different or so you have to kind of watch out for that too i just like the you know the fact that you know cav the, the slice of cav that i'm familiar with is, is a pretty healthy game right it plays well on the table a lot of options some of the factions maybe still need just a little bit of padding to round out all their options but i mean it's a perfectly serviceable game and then oh by the way push that off to the side here's this giant sort of narrative way of playing the game that i personally have barely even touched so like i never think about buying a veteran pilot or 
you know, like the, you know, like the the artillery that you can call in, or the you right. know, the pylons on an aircraft, you can put things on them. Right. Uh, there's a whole other side of this game that I have yet to really have a chance to crack open. Yeah, no, that's the. I mean, that's really where the upgrades and the specializations come from. I mean, that stuff is much more of a campaign, you know, the big picture kind of stuff that that you want to add on to and build on to. Because I mean, just you're talking about ECM and, and APA and stuff like that. You can add those on the models. It's not as good, yeah. obviously. Yeah, the external modules. Yeah, but they're, ex it, they're external, you know, uh, mm -hmm. pods, okay. I guess. <laughs> so, so, so now I have this idea. I just want to, I, I just want to sculpt together like, like, like um, an emperor that's picked up a warden and had, or a warden B and has it tucked underneath his arm. Okay. <laughs> and that's his external ECM pod. I'm sorry. It's Goober night. I, I, I ate dinner before. I usually eat after the show. I ate dinner before and said so I'm full of calories and you're, energy. You're, and all, you're, like, all, oh. you're all pumped up. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Totally ready to go. Speaking of ready to go, um, you mentioned this back during uh, CavCon. Stargrave is going to release the end of April. I think April 29th is when the book is available. Yep. And so I watched, um, I watched somebody sort of go through the book and cover each of the sections on a YouTube video. And man, I think there is, for, first of all, sorry to bring this up in, in, on the Cavs show, but I think Stargrave is going to be fantastically fun to play. All right, enough of that. I feel like there's a, you could glue some Cav modules on top of that Stargrave stuff and have a really fun campaign. Well, yeah, and I think that that's, you know, I mean, the main thing is just set it up so that you don't have to play on Ice Worlds. It's a, it's, 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 it can be any world you want, John. It turns out if you have imagination, ice can be anything you want it yeah, to be. Yeah, <laughs> apparently so. It's the battle of the snowmen. Oh. See you later, Hobby Habit. Nice, nice of you to drop by. But yeah, no, I Dave. think, I think, I mean, I want to look at it from that standpoint and see, you know, what I can do as yeah. a, a plug in for Cav on it. Yeah. Or, so, I mean, just, even inspired by you know the way they do things i right. i think there's a lot of fun there you start out as like a call it a lieutenant with like one squad of very basic you know like a recon squad and you play through the game and you level up and you earn points and you upgrade your ride and add essays and increase your talent and hire new people when you lose a pilot I, ugh, john sign me up well that's 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 coming in our campaign system i mean we're going to have that but you know it'll be nice to look at the star gray with the the way that they put some of that together and see if that's not something that we can either uh, add to the campaign system, you know, to add a little more to it, or like I said, just do a plug-in for it and use all use all our background and stuff. So either way, I'm 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 hey, excited just for another another log on the fire. Why not? Just keep <laughs> pot, just keep piling those bitches on. <laughs> oh boy, John is wired up too. Yeah. So it's good. Yep. Good, 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 good. I want to do, I want to do an entire, entire mercenary company called Betty's Bitches. So yeah, that's my next one. Go for it. Yeah. Um, so is the commander named Betty and she has a lot of disrespect for her pilot? Could be. Could be. Or could, it could all be female <laughs> and they're all female badass pilots. Kicking ass I, and taking names. Aren't they all? Yeah. No matter what. <laughs> So Dave, yeah, I, I'm sorry. I was, I was, I was, I, I may have accidentally said a bad word about cons. Great stat sheet. Just, I need a proxy model. <sighs> Send my Kodiak over to shoot you. <laughs> Come on over. Yeah. Bang, bang, bang. All right. So <sighs> I, Discord has been very active this week, John. And, um, one of the things that really caught my eye, um, there was a fellow who uh, showed up. Uh, the first I recognized him was, was back during CavCon. Uh, Freefall Geek is his Discord name. And he was asking a lot of questions about um, 3D printing. I, I gather from what I read, he or she, I don't honestly know. I just use the, the male pronoun generically. My apologies. Um, has acquired a new 3D printer and it was asking a ton of questions. Commander Royce, I think, was over there giving tons of great advice. And John, I've seen your setup. I, I know you know something about 3D printing. Yeah. And I was wondering, what kind of advice would you have for the 
the person who who's who, who's interested in getting a 3D printer. I mean, like I just wake up one morning and I'm like, I've got some money in my pocket. I want a 3D printer. What do I need to know? All right. First off, I'm going to come at this in two different ways. I'm going to come at this first as a consumer, and then I'll and then I'll do it a little different. If I had it all to do over again, and all I was wanting to do is print, is I play a game, and I want to print stuff for that game, the last thing that I would do is buy a 3D printer. There are there are people out there now that will literally take those files. You can go buy them. You can get them free or whatever. Send them to them. They will print those suckers up, send you a finished model for 20 bucks. And in the grand scheme of things, the time, the trouble, the effort, it's worth it just to, you know, not have 10 failed prints to try to get one or whatever. Because, you know, if the guy's charging you for it, he's going to send you a good one. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and really, because in my mind, and, and people will have different experiences like this, 3D printing has not matured enough for the average consumer. Okay. Um, it is uh, not as easy as they make it look to be, and it's not as nice looking as it can be. A lot of the subpar, the, the cheaper ones, um, are uh, you, they're just not as good looking as you think they are. You can, you cannot, contrary to what a YouTube video does, you can't. T I call the the FDM printers the ones that use the plastic wire. Or it looks like weed I, Yeah, I call them weed whacker printers. So that's why, that's why I, call, okay. I call them weed whacker printers. Uh, <laughs> there's guys that are trying to show you that they're printing 28 millimeter models on weed whacker printers. Uh, you know, for, I mean, it, it beats the hell out of stick men or something, you know, as a kid. I mean, mm -hmm. if you just want stuff to put out on the board. Um, but the bigger you can get something, the nicer it'll look. You know, the smaller stuff, if you don't get into resin. Now, you get into resin, that's a whole nother cup of, uh, of worms to get into. But as far as that side of it, that's what I would do. Now, take it from the side of the hobbyist, all right, that you're wanting to get, get a 3D printer to, to, uh, to print stuff or whatever that. I'm telling you right now, contrary to what anybody tells you, don't go out and buy a $300 printer. Um, they are a lot of work. They are a lot of trial and error. They are hours and days spent on YouTube and Twitch shows and everything like that. Now, if that's if that floats your boat, then get on it and go. Be the captain of that trip. But by the time you're done with that $300 printer, you're going to have spent... Five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred dollars, adding and changing stuff out on that. It's you. You get. I mean, truly, with three D printing, the old adage is very, very true. You get what you pay for. Hmm. Um, you know, there, there's a, a a company that makes three D weed whackers called Prusa. They're, I think, they're out of Czechoslovakia. Is where they're out of. Mm -hmm. They sell a nine hundred dollar three D printer that is. 20 times easier to use than, than anything out there. I mean, they're pretty much out of the box and they're very, they're very supportive and very, you know, and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. again, if you really want to do it and you want to get something that you're happy with, don't skimp on the printer, you know, and, okay. and, and they've got, you know, they've got the $300 resin printers out there and, you know, the, the, the any cubic and stuff like that. And again, you can get a good product out of those a passable one, but it is a lot of work. It is not opening that box up, throwing some resin in it, putting the file in it, pushing a button, and then voila, two hours later, you get a finished file. It, it doesn't work that way. So mm. um, if you've got somebody that's already done all that and knows, you know, that's that helps a lot too. You know, if you're not doing it alone, et cetera, et cetera. But, it is not the easiest trip uh, to take. So just keep that in mind. So this Prusa you're talking about, that's still a, a weed whacker it's printer? It's still a weed whacker printer, but it is, okay. it is, 
it's more developed. The guy, the Joseph Prusa, who owns the company and designed it, it's his baby. And one of the things that they do is uh, most of the parts on it are 3D printed. So mm. if something has to be replaced or whatever, you can just download the file off their website and, and either get somebody else to print it or if you have another printer or whatever, or you can order it from them or whatever. But, uh, you know, they, and they, they've got their own software, their own um, uh, slicer, um, stuff like that, that it's just, it's all, it's a package deal. It's all made to work together rather than this printer from right. this and this slicer from here and this from here and that from here. It, it's just, it's the same reason why people have problems with Microsoft computers, with PCs, mm -hmm. is if you went out and got a quality PC that somebody designed from the beginning and went and got this part because it's been tested and they, this driver goes with that and everything like that, you could punch that all in there, turn that computer on and never have any of the problems that you hear people bitching about. The minute mm -hmm. you go out and buy these subpar PCs that they got the this from China and that from Taiwan and you know they paid $10 for this power supply and stuff like that, that Microsoft never heard of, so they didn't even make drivers for it. Um, those are the nightmare situations that you have. And that's the same thing you run into with 3D printers. If you get this from this guy, and this from this guy, and this from this guy, it may or may not groove together. And, and you end up doing a lot of the work for it. So, you know, I know in situations that, uh, that people, you know, money is an issue and you got to do what you got to do with it. But I'm here to tell you in the long run, don't just immediately run out and buy the cheap one thinking you're going to sit down and go. So, so John, I don't, I don't really know anything about about three D printing for the most part, other than the, what I picked up listening to you. But cussing, I can share a very similar. To me cussing. I may have heard cuss words before I met you. I think maybe. <laughs> yeah. Not sure. Mm -hmm. um, but airbrushing to me is the same way. So, so I'm fairly familiar with airbrushing now. But you said something a minute ago that that is so true. I, I think about any sort of hobby activity. If there's somebody around you who already has an idea of what they're doing, it's much easier to start kind of from that from that ground zero because they can lift you up. Right. So when I first started learning how to airbrush, I knew I knew nobody that airbrushed, nobody, and so I just had to teach myself and watch videos and tinker and get very frustrated for like more than a year before I realized really where where my failures were. And so if I had had that person, it would have been fantastically useful so so i always make a point when whenever we do have hobby time around around my hometown I, if anybody's vaguely interested in the airbrush i, I definitely try and help them out right. and be that guy so that they don't have to start out from ground zero and two todd and i would todd farnholtz and i will will disagree about this but i i, I feel like you i i want to i want to eliminate the tool as the source of failure right right so when I'm trying to learn something, I don't want to have to ask myself, well, I don't know if this isn't working because I suck or because this tool I'm working with right. sucks. And so I always want to, you know, not pay what I call the, the new, like the, the new person the, the tax, right? Tax. Right. And instead of buying a $40 airbrush, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to buy a name brand. I'm going to read, I'm going to get a badger. So something that I can afford, but something that where I know the tool is not the problem. Right. And, uh, and just buy it once instead of having to buy right. the $40 one and then turn around and buy the Badger anyway. Right. I've had so sub, sounds... sub $50 airbrushes, and you're exactly right. I mean, it's there is a difference. There is the way that they do, the way they clean, the way they're made up and everything like that. And, you know, if you are uh, in, in a good enough place to uh, um, work through those frustrations and not give up, then you're okay, but... 80% of the people don't. They After a week of effing with it, they're, I'm done. I'm never touching it again. And anybody that comes in and tells you um, that, and it's not a matter, I mean, you the guys that work it out, I mean, there's guys that take $50 airbrushes and paint as good as anybody that does out there, all right? But they, yes. but they had to work twice as hard at it to do it, and it's just not done. Uh, Gimli, I'm slowly saving up Reaper store credit to get a VEX. That's great if you've got credit and everything to do that. Um, you know, uh, the the VEXs are nice. Um, I have a couple of them. Um, 
but they're just badger airbrushes. Okay. So um, there are other badger airbrushes out there that aren't 200 bucks. So, or 300 or whatever they are. So just keep that in mind, especially when Badger does their birthday sale and stuff every year. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Or if you can catch Badger, uh, Badger at a convention. At a convention. I, yep. Uh, the deals are incredible, especially if he's got airbrushes yeah. laying around on Sunday. Holy moly. Go, go visit, go visit Ken and let him know you want to buy an Right. And, that, and that's what I, what I was saying. If you've got the credit and everything like that, I'm not trying to talk you out of not spending your dime like that. I'm just saying though, if it's, you know, before you spend that kind of money on your first airbrush, there are some entry level badger airbrushes and um, Iwatas. I'm a big Iwata guy. Um, I love Iwatas. Um, there's some decent posh airbrushes out there too. Um, but uh, but yeah, the fifty dollar airbrushes suck. So so I own like one of the really high end Harder and Steambeck airbrushes, and it's fantastic. It is a fantastic airbrush. But I'll be honest with you, the Sotar 2020 does like 90% of what it does yeah. and costs a fifth as much probably if you catch it on sale. Right. So I, I, I think there's a level, right? So to back up a second, uh, Todd Farnholtz, um, Master Guns, who obviously John knows, those of you who were around for Cavcon, he was the one that airbrushed the Kodiak on stream. That guy has the exact opposite opinion and he is a master with the airbrush, all right? He has just a cheap eBay airbrush and he makes it work and he does spectacular things with it. So there's two sides to every story. I'm just telling you my side. Todd would tell you a different side. I think we're both pretty decent with an airbrush and, and we have totally different ways of getting to where we ended up. Um, so uh, if you if, 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 if $40 for an, for an airbrush is what you wanna do, swing for the fences, buddy. Just. It's not it's not my path, right. not the way I would go. No, I think you're much better off to and and you know and you have to research it. I mean, by the same token, don't run out there and buy a four hundred dollar airbrush as your first airbrush because there's a learning curve on that stuff too, and and it can be very frustrating when because those airbrushes are designed for people that's been doing it for ten years and know what the hell they're doing. All right, so they can cut some a ways doing things because and set stuff up because they know somebody's going to clean it right or clean the tip or do what they're supposed to as they go um so you know they tend to be it's kind of like an m16 versus an ak-47 you know so a lot of those entry level and they're decent you know middle of the road are kind of the ak-47s they're, they're really hard to screw up they you know they kind of work through you not mixing your paint right and things like that whereas the, the higher end, very nice airbrushes are very unforgiving. If you don't have that paint mm -hmm. mixed just right, if you're not holding your tongue just right, you're, you're not getting anything out of it. So I, I can 100, there's an airbrush three and a half feet away from me that I that is that exact example John just gave yeah. you, all right? One of the very first airbrushes I got with this harder, it was this harder in Steambeck, and it came with, amongst other things, a 0.15 needle. Oh my God, you can barely shoot water through that yeah. thing. You have to know exactly. It's. I, I don't even mess with it. I, I put it away a long time ago. I just use the bigger needle sizes. But if you don't, if you don't realize that's what's in your brush when you get it, and you start trying to spray paint, and you get one spurt, and then it stops. As a newbie, you're not going to know why that's happening. And, and that's John's point. Yeah. This that airbrush has so many options, and expects you to know what you're doing. It's it's not a good entry level airbrush. It's a fantastic airbrush but it's not for beginners. Right. It's like you don't put a brand new driver in a Formula One car. Yeah. Well, and that's and those little needles and stuff like that, those are designed for like inks and gouache paint and stuff like that that have such mm -hmm. super, super fine pigments and they're so basically one step up from water anyway um, mm -hmm. that, that you can spray with that. So, <clears throat> that, and, and like I said, that's the same thing. A lot of materials, it's a, it's a lot harder to spray acrylics and stuff through those than inks and watercolors and um, I, I actually learned because when I went I went to school and, and did graphic design and stuff like that when we were airbrushing we learned with gouache paint which is basically uh, egg white paint it's kind of like a tempera paint or whatever but you can it, it's it's soft you know you squeeze out of a tube like you do oil paints or whatever 
and mix a little mm -hmm. water with it to get it thicker or thinner or whatever. And you can even thick, you can spray it through an airbrush. But it, and it's mm -hmm. very light. Gives you can get a watercolor look all the way up to an oil look with it and stuff like that. So, but we learned. But this was for painting on you know paper and canvas and stuff like that. Okay. So the the unfortunately you cannot. I, well, I guess if you really tried, I guess you could, but gouache paint was not, uh, it's not permanent. <laughs> so you wouldn't want to, without sealing it or something like that. So you can't really use it to paint a mini. I'm sure people out there do, but if they wanted to, but but essentially if you're just trying to paint stuff, gouache paint is, is really good paint to, to learn with because it's easy to mix up. I think in the chat there, Ilmarin has, he's, he, he agrees, he's, he was talking about shoes. I, I feel kind of the same way. Cheap shoes aren't worth buying. No, they're not. By the time, I mean, you buy one good pair, they last a year plus, or you could buy five cheap pairs and spend just as much. Yep. Yep. And Tiger Wraith, Todd is, Todd's a champ. So I, I agree with you. There's nothing, I mean, if you can make it work, make it work. I'm, I'm not telling you what, just sharing my experience. And and again, the point that I brought Tiger Wraith was, I'm not saying that you cannot paint good with a cheap airbrush. I'm just saying you have to work twice as hard at it. So. All right. So, so resin printers, John, I mean, they, they kind of achieved the same goal. How are they different? What was, what does it mean to be a resin versus a weed whacker printer? Well, what's the difference? Well, resin printers, I mean, it's the same. They're both additive machines. They, they take a layer and they, and they go like, you know, build that where the difference is the weed whacker printers, actually extrude that material out through a uh, hot end. So basically it's like putting cheese wheels on your cracker. <laughs> it just goes around mm -hmm. and builds those up, okay? okay? Your resin printers actually are, and there's different ways that they go about doing it, but most of the common ones, like the any phobic and stuff like that, they basically, they flash an image with a, or a, would use a laser to harden a layer of resin. So they work upside down as opposed to build up to them. So that the thing goes down in there and it, that laser goes back and forth and hardens that resin to make that layer and then it moves up and, and keeps doing its thing. Um, so the ability to be more accurate is tenfold. I mean, you can, I mean, you've seen some of the stuff that we print around here, mm -hmm. you know, it's yes. just as smooth as a baby's bottom. Um, but those are those are higher end resin printers. They're on their finest resolution, you know, because they they have a resolution just like regular printers and stuff do. Um, but uh, but if you really want to get pretty looking figures, that's what they are. The problem with with that type of printing though is that stuff has to be supported. So you end up with these figures that have all these forks and scaffolding come off of them. Um, bigger mm -hmm. stuff, it's not that big a deal. It's easy to clean up and everything like that. You get into the little minis and stuff like that. It's hard to uh, to get in there sometimes in some of the little crevices where you get some of that stuff in there to get it cleaned out. So it takes much patience, Grasshopper. And so the, the resin printers are kind of a step up in, in quality you say they in are they're in quality they the, the material is not as tough um, generally I mean uh -huh. but uh, the um, uh, but the resolution is finer and, and most of the smaller stuff it's okay it's you know you take care of it but you know you try to print little rifles and little barrels and stuff with it it's generally you're gonna probably break them at some point mm -hmm. so and so these Earlier, you were talking about these these places, these services that operate on the internet. Do they have they have the same kind of printers that you can buy, or is there like a business grade? They, where, most where, of them have like, the higher end ones. Um, some of you know some of the weed whacker ones. Again, it's the, the, they 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 they've tuned them in. They've made them work. They've spent the last year learning everything they can about them and spending hours messing with them, and they've got them as tuned in as good as you can do them. But mm -hmm. they're, like I said, they're willing, there's so many people that do it now. You can get somebody to print, you know, these big building files for 10 bucks on Weed Whacker printers. And it's just uh, no mess, no fuss. Just have to pay somebody mm -hmm. 10 bucks and get what you want. 
All right. So yeah, all the all the cobras, everything that we did from the last Calcon, the the um, spathas and everything, those are all those are all resin printed, and um, those were done on a form two, I believe. That's what we use for that. We we've got a form three now, but I think I did all those on a form two. So which again, it's a higher end printer. They run about three grand, but again, it's it's just they're a lot easier to use. So. I'd rather I'd rather have my time to do other things and sit around watching guys like me on Twitch videos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, telling you, I I still feel like you could point a camera at one of those printers or the cutter or something like that, and and just turn the channel we, we, on we, we when we're not broadcasting. Been, uh, we when we move stuff around, when we tore all the weed whacker printers down, that was always the plan. I, I'd set up a corner here for one of the weed whacker printers mm -hmm. for us to run during the day and it just we just haven't got back to doing it all that stuff still i mean you guys were here you saw it it's still all piled up over there because yep. we just haven't had time to go through and that's part of the problem is you know when we moved everything around the 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 high-end resin printers we moved them to a different spot in the room plugged them in punched a couple of buttons and voila we were back in business We've got to start all over with those weed whackers. I mean, we've got to get them all tuned back in. We've got to reset this and set that back up and do this and whatever. And and we just, I don't have time. I just don't have time to do them. So they sit there doing nothing. So my plan is I want to hire somebody at some point to come in and that's all they do is sit here and dick with 3D printers all day. So I need a good high school kid that's super into it and, yeah. Go, let them go. Needs, Turn them loose. Wants to, wants to do that instead of making tacos. Exactly. Here, just let me hand you a file. Go print it for me. Bring me ten of them. There we go. <laughs> I mean, that's where the holdup is on the broadsword. You know, right. if we had the weed whackers back up, and you know, the big parts we we can print on those, and we probably could start doing broadswords. But we just haven't had time. So. Oh my gosh! Somebody have a spare high school kid we could borrow. <laughs> Which led into, Bueller, come on. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> well, we can do it with the laser cutter. So I thought. Yeah. So and that's where the back Here we are. Went. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm okay with that. I, at some point in time, I fully anticipate owning a, a broadsword, a badger, and an as yet unnamed Almirathil dropship. Yeah. Well, and that's and that's where we're doing is because of the slow. It, it's it's taking longer to cut just because we these badger ships we got so many of them and, and everything like that we haven't been pushing them out the door yet because i don't want to i don't want to trickle them i don't want one guy to get one you know and then every you know everybody right so uh, we're getting there we're going to start to getting this stuff fit, finishing out as fast as i can I, I don't i haven't had some of the help that i thought i would have and there's always the little things you don't plan on and stuff like that. But uh, I know that uh, we've done pretty good so far this week pushing orders out every day. But again, if you've got a um, <clears throat> badger in your order, <laughs> just hold on. We're get we're getting there. We haven't we haven't why would we haven't run off to Mexico with your money or anything. They're they're coming. <laughs> Colonel Kane, glad to see you in the chat there, buddy. Glad to see you in the chat. I need to clone myself. I need to clone myself ten times. So, I don't, know. John. Just think of the grocery bill. Uh, it's a whole lot of unsweetened tea. A lot of unsweet tea. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. So, um, I mean, I guess we could we could we could talk a little bit about ReaperCon and Cav RPG maybe for a few sure. minutes. Sure. I mean, we haven't had a lot of time to, uh, to work on that. I'm still digesting the rules. I'm, I've read through them once. I have a good overview. Now I'm looking for, you know, uh, somebody back when we first started talking about this, I think it was hobby habit shared like a, a trillion YouTube videos with examples of year zero games and things like that. So I'm slowly watching those just to kind of immerse myself in, in what other people have done in the space. And then we need to, um, and then I guess, 
what we need to do is we need to have a discussion about what it is we want to accomplish at ReaperCon. All right, just a second. So uh, because... Gimli asked, John, I sent an email to Capcom email, did my squad photo not go through the filter? Is that something that you just emailed here in the last couple of days or something that, that was a picture that we missed? Um, I haven't went, the, the reason why is because we've got it set up where we have to physically go log in and check it. So I, I, I can look at it. A day or so, yeah. I uh, um, I'll look. I like I said, it's it's just a separate email that we don't have set up on a computer. I have to log in and go look at it. So, um, which which and which models were was it? Did I? Well, I'll go. I'll look at it. I'll figure it out tomorrow. So I apologize for that if we did. It it's been a CF at times. Charlie Foxtrot. Yes, Charlie Foxtrot. Charlie Foxtrot. Yeah, I saw, Gimli, I saw a ton of pictures of Blue Templars. I mean, you've painted even more of those? Good grief. Clown Fiesta. So, but, but at Rebercon, um, I mean, again, still a long way away. Still all sorts of hurdles to jump, but um, I'm thinking you said there's not going to be a tournament, so there will be a couple of tables for people to do pickup games, and then maybe in the evening, like Friday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right. we could run like a two or three hour session just to get people's feet wet. Yeah, I, I think we'll have plenty of space and plenty of tables. I don't know if anybody's been following right. that. They are right now, they are limiting it to 1,000 people. So they are putting 1,000 tickets on sale and when those are gone, they're gone. Um, and and just, just in case you don't know, those go on sale this Friday, April 9th at noon Central Standard Time. And uh, I would recommend you be there at noon because a thousand is a very small number. Yeah, and 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 they may as things change and, and everything like that, they, they may open it up and go a little further. They're just kind of taking the safe route, you know, because there is this this new version of COVID that's coming through that uh, that oh. they're afraid is going to have quite the effect again or something. So. Um, will that convention have a virtual side to it? Not that we'll do. I'm sure that Reaper might do some things online. Um, I know that I had talked to him last year before all this happened when we were planning for last year. We had intended on live streaming during the entire show. Um, unfortunately, the hotel does not have the bandwidth for multiple people to do that. So, um, so that kind of, I was going to try to a different route and then everything got canceled and it didn't matter. So, um, so we'll see. I mean, I would like to be able to, um, the good thing, the good thing about is I haven't really messed with it a whole lot, but you know, supposedly 5g is supposed to be the super fast speed able and everything. And I would think that the Dallas area would be top on the list for that to be set up mm -hmm. um, so that it could be that we could do that, that we can just set up a hotspot. Yeah, it would be fun, you know, for the people that can't make it there. Um, maybe we could, you know, stream, you know, one camera angle or something. Even if you could just pick up the audio from the, you know, the CAV RPG, that might be enough to entertain right. people just to let them hear what sort of things that we're doing and talking right. about what, what chicanery we can get away with. Well, and, and you're correct, Ed. I mean, they're planning on doing a virtual convention every year um, in some form or another. I don't know how much that will correspond with an actual live one where it'll be different weekends or something like that. But so <clears throat> I haven't heard, heard the final setup yet. Do I want to be our in-person liaison? Liaisoning for what do you need me to do, Dave? I'm, 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 I'll do my best to help you out. What you need? And Tiger, you Tiger are correct, me. but there's like three different versions of, of 5G. There is a version of 5G out there that is doing what it's supposed to do in some areas, but there's a lot of stuff that people are calling 5G that's not really what it's supposed to be, so. <laughs> but we're hoping, you know, I mean, the, the Dallas area, that's a pretty major area that if, if they're going to have the greatest and best, then it should be there. 
So I'll give it some thought. I, I mean, d during the whole COVID pandemic thing, people were able to do all kinds of, you know, like streaming of role playing games. Surely there's some lessons to be learned from those folks. Uh, again, bandwidth will be the, 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 the key limiter. But in terms of, you know, somebody else has already plowed that field. And so I just got to figure out what they did that worked. And maybe we can find a way to share our uh, RPG game with the people that can't make it because I think that would be a lot of fun. I know, I know, up at Lawrence, Kansas, that that ended up be, that was a big test bed for five um, G and everything like that. And I think you can go anywhere in the city, and if you can get onto the network, it's lightning fast. So I know here in Tulsa that Cox, the the local, the the, the big major internet provider, Cox Cable, um, they run Wi-Fi spots like yes. for, for all over town. Yeah, they I have. Mean, I'm constantly. Yeah, out. they've got those in Wichita yeah. too. So yeah. So I mean, maybe that's a thing. Right. Maybe you could you could hit the local internet service providers stuff and not use the hotel. Yeah. Maybe. Well, and that's the deal. That's just to see what else that we can do or whatever. Because like I said, I. I've got Verizon too, um, and with a hotspot, everything on it like that, and, and it's okay for a quick, you know, check something on the internet right quick, or or uh, uh, check out a uh, my email or something like that. But yeah, it's it's not it wouldn't support us support live streaming at all. Hmm. Interesting. And and yeah. and you're probably again, Tiger. You're probably right with the Ultra Five G. Again, there's different Five Gs that they're all calling Five G. That there's some of them that aren't really Five G. I don't remember what the Verizon one is in that whole picture, but it has to also do. They don't have the infrastructure set up in a lot of areas yet with the correct towers and everything. So yeah. it's going to take a while. Turns out New York City and Los Angeles and Dallas. Are probably uh, more attractive markets than El Dorito and Tulsa. Probably and so. Like probably that. so. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, we've got five G T phones, and sometimes I'm lucky to get on three G here in El Dorito. So mm. uh, anyway, but yeah, no, I, I think we'll get it. We'll have plenty of stuff going on. We'll be able to do some things. It's just we're just gonna have to work around it. Yeah, it doesn't matter if your house is fiber if the ISP. Is, yeah, it's. You're always going to be whatever the the lowest point is. You're going to have to pay for mm -hmm. so. It's like a convoy. You can only sail as fast as the slowest yeah, ship. Very much so. Speaking of which, Sean, I still cannot find that Greyhound movie. What do, other than buying an Apple? What do I have to do to watch that that Greyhound? Have movie? they not put it up on uh, Voodoo or anything like that? I, I mean, I haven't seen it. I looked. Uh, I checked Netflix and. Amazon Prime and all that other stuff, all the ones that I have. Right. And I've still not seen it available. I don't know. I, I've been wanting to watch it too, so I, but I haven't looked yet. So. Me too. Hmm. Did you watch The Falcon and Winter Soldier? Uh, yes. I watched the current one from Friday that brought back what's did, her name. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it's all right. John, you're so hard to please. God, well, I'm. Yeah, I don't know. It just has. It hasn't floated in my boat yet. So you're looking forward to the Loki, the Loki one that's coming up. Does is Loki? Your I guy? did. I did see the deal for that, and that looked like a. I. It just seems kind of. I mean, there was parts of this one that got a little more exciting, but mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem like it has very much of a comic book heroic superhero vibe to it. That's goes with it mm. and i'm not real wild about the little curly red-haired girl being the bad guy or so i don't know i don't know it's just me it's just me i'm sorry john is a hard is a hard sell he's he's a hard customer to please i know i who would ever guess i'm excited about it i'm enjoying the heck out of it i like it i don't mind that the little red-headed lady is is appears to be note appears to be the villain who knows yeah, well she blew up that I'd building be... and killed all those people that doesn't sound like she's a big hero to me so uh, she's certainly not a hero yeah. but, well, depends on your perspective i guess i mean the rock probably have heroes that that are other people might view as not heroes right right 
difficult to imagine a red-headed villain seriously colonel kane come on now hair is just a color right could be any color and low key for loki yes sorry i'm learning your humor is way above my head i'm i missed it but you're you're 100 right i i'm i'm excited for loki i they could tell a story about lockjaw if you knew who that is i'd be super excited for that i i just love all the comic stuff oh i was trying to see godzilla with that yeah i i enjoyed it i mean again okay. had that you did get to see it i did I watched it last Sunday. I, I was going to go to the theater and see it, but my, but my favorite local theater hasn't opened back up yet the way I thought it was going to. So we just watched it at home. I did check out the tickets, you know, because I could support a different theater. But man, they, I mean, literally, there were only two or three seats available everywhere I looked. So I just decided to stay home and watch it. Yeah, I don't see. I was looking here right quick to see if it was, you got my interest. I just know we had talked about it. Yeah. And, and it's been a while since I've, I've, I've still haven't heard where, where it's available at. Well, it's, uh, you would think that they would have it uh, where you could rent it or buy it at this point, but apparently yep. not. So, I mean, it's been out at least six yeah, months now, hasn't it? Who knows with Apple, those bastards. <laughs> I, not my favorite they company may, in the they, universe. They have a vault like Disney. It goes into the vault. They're yeah. going to bring it out every seven years. Take care, Dave. Yeah, Cthulhu, that's I just whatever. I mean, enjoy keeping your movie to yourself, I guess. I'm sure there's still plenty of people rent or streaming. It. I do know several people that watched it by, I guess you get, if you sign up, you get a free week. <laughs> Yeah. So they signed up for the free week, watched it, whatever they wanted to watch, and then canceled it. So, I, I mean, it's tempting. I yeah. guess eventually I'll have to do it if they don't put it out on DVD or something where I can get my hands on oh, it. I, I, I got to think at some point it's going to hit the pay-per-view. Surely. So. Or or not. Maybe Apple will just tell us all to go jump in a lake. Yeah. <laughs> like they've never done that before. <laughs> yeah. I mean... Uh, Ages and ages ago, so I'm a big Audible, Audible book fan, like the company Audible that that um, sells the audio books. Yep. And for a long time, it was it was Apple only for a while. And I just my friend at work that had it, I was just so jealous of him because you know it's it's just a wonderful way to consume books. I can I can hobby and listen to a book. I can work in the yard and listen to a book. And it was just I wanted that service so bad. It it took them till about 2013 to finally make it available on on Android devices. Right. All right, Colonel Kane, good night. Thanks for showing up, bud. See you, Colonel. Um, speaking of Audible, I, I think it was last night I was watching something or whatever. Audible had a, uh, they're advertising a book or something like that, that uh, Aaron Paul, I guess, the guy that, that does, uh, that was the sidekick in Breaking Bad. Did you watch that at all? The, the kid. I have not seen Breaking Bad. Well, anyway, so I but Audible had a commercial for the, a book that I guess this guy's doing the right the deal for. That was the first time I'd ever seen anything like that. So, you mean he's narrating it or he's narr writing narr it? narrating narr narr narrating it? Yes. So I I have listened to some books that have somewhat celebrities like narrate them. Like Will Wheaton does some books that I really enjoy. Right. He's not much of a celebrity, but he's a little bit. Red Shirts, I think it was, by Scalzi, John Scalzi. Yeah. It's kind of a parody of Star Trek. Right. It was really funny listening to Wheaton read that. Yeah, I've read some I've read some Scalzi books. He's a pretty good writer, if you like that type it's of writing. Song. Yeah. That, he's military. It. He does a lot of military sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So. You know, at some point in time, we should probably put together, like, a, I mean, I know you and I have discussed it, sort of a, like a reading list of things that are kind of cav tangential that might be kind of fun yep. yeah yeah uh, yeah because there's some stuff out there it's uh, mm -hmm. it's funny when I see some things that I'm pretty sure were unique to cav show up in a, some recent books <laughs> <laughs> like oh really yeah, hmm. yeah. there's a, a series that K 
came out not too long ago that their main weapons are Max. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. really? So I thought that was kind of funny. Never heard those after that acronym before. No, it's not one that I thought when we started using it that I'd really ever heard anywhere before. So, but it just seemed kind of funny that there was the way that they talked about some of the weapon systems were very, uh, seemed very cav like to me. I'm sure those, those authors either are already fans of this kind of stuff yeah. or they do their research, you know, like, Hey, I'm going to write a book about giant robots. What's out there. Let's go see what people hey, are I, using. And yeah, I got no problem with them. There, there's something I think is cool. I'll figure out a way to get it in the cab universe. So it yeah. is what it is. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So just kind of make a something hodgepodge about, of stuff. Hey, is, is, as long as you're having fun, that's the important thing. Yep. Oh, man. Well, what do we got going on in the near future, John? Oh... Uh, Global domination. No. Global domination. We're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna laser cut the world, it, right? right that, I mean world. that's all it is. We're just strictly trying to get everything done and out the door here. And we've you know, we all last week was basically resetting the shop after the show and everything like that. So getting the shipping area set back up and, and getting you know, building all this stuff. I you know, and hey, I'll take the bullet for it. I I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was going to be. I wasn't expecting this type of reaction. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, we're just having to play catch up. So hopefully everybody will be cool about it. If not, then they hunt me down and put a bullet in the back <laughs> of my head, I guess. Oh, they're not going to do so. that. Come on, John. Everybody loves you. You're like the big. You're like the big Santa Claus guy that gives us the pew pewy goodness. An, Nobody's an overflowing here. cup of human kindness. <laughs> Laser cut dictators. That would be funny. You know, what, that's funny that you should say that. Is I actually one of the things that I have have been playing with is a laser cut dictator kind of a flat model so mm -hmm. if you if, if you look from the side you see the silhouette but if you look at i'll show it to you i think it, it but actually i have i have laser cut at a dictator does it look like a regular 3d mini no but it's how it's set up it's got kind of a kind of a kind of cool look to it i thought so there was a this has been years and years ago but there was a it was a pirate ship game that you used to buy in booster packs. Yep. And they had like these full color printed cards that you could pop out and assemble into a kind of, kind of a 3D model. Right. Or, do you remember that? I do. And that's, that's, that's how the dictator, that's how that kind of inspired me for that. So, um, because I had, I, um, here over the last couple of months, there's a couple of guys out there that are actually, they're 3D uh, printing, or not 3D printing, but laser cutting out. Um, stands of troops for like big massive games yeah. or whatever so they do they cut them out so you see in the front and then they do a back and you glue the two together so if you look at them from the side they're just two thicknesses of the deal but if you look at them from the front or the back they they they've got banners and flags and their swords and everything like nice. that and you know but they're doing them for you know romans and you know the, the all the historical type games or something like that but they they're pretty cool looking. I mean, for what they are, and you, they're they're, you know, with the lines already cut into it, they're very easy to kind of do kind of a paint by number kind of paint schemes on them. So, when I was when, when I was freshly out of high school, Tulsa had a had a convention, um, and at this convention, the science fiction gaming slash convention, there was a company. I believe it was out of Missouri that had this this interesting product. It was called Dinky Dungeons. All right. And what it was is it was one of those little tiny Ziploc bags, you know, about the size of, a, of an oversized card. Right. And in it was a, a rule, a role playing game, some character sheets and some dice. And the entire game was in this little tiny Ziploc bag. And so for like a buck and a half or two bucks or whatever it was, you could buy this thing, make your character up, roll these little micro dice. You had a role playing game in a bag. And so now it suddenly it occurs to me you could make like a one on one cab game that you would sell in like a little 
tear open or a Ziploc bag, right? And it's like the entire game, rules, dice, and the little laser cut caps would be in this bag. Right. I, I, I think that's that that could be fun. A, a fun little thing to sell at a convention or something. I'd buy it. Uh, you know, something too that I, I thought would be fun to do. I've got to find them. It's been so long since I had them. But years ago, um, when Battletech very, uh, not too long after it first came out, there was a company, and I think they were called Lost Worlds or Lost Horizon or something like that. Yep. But they made yep. these mech battle books, okay? And you mm -hmm. would play, you would take this book and you take this book and you would do your thing and do it like that. Mm -hmm. I thought it would be kind of cool to bring that back and do a cab version or something. I thought the, I always thought those were kind of fun. Yeah. Those, those, those are always a lot of fun. You know, there was m much more than just cab, right? They had fantasy right. models. No, I did... knew they did a whole bunch, but I, like I said, I, yeah. they, they did like the original 10 battle mechs or something like that, the, the original mm -hmm. out of the battle droids. So, all kinds of stuff. What well, was old is new. Yes, sir. All right. Well, it's nine o'clock. So, I think we rambled on <laughs> as much as possible. So I got to yes, try sir. to get another fresh start on it tomorrow. So, yeah, you got to, you need to get to work. Got a couple of problems to overcome in the morning. So, be another long day. <laughs> But uh, uh, we're getting there, guys. I think we got everybody that uh, had their gift certificates and stuff. I think we've got that all sorted out. Mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, uh, Chris uh, Cthulhu won the T-shirt that, that you brought. Um, mm -hmm. He's got an outstanding order, so we're just, we'll are just we hold on to your shirt and toss it in that box for you. Yep. Um other than that, I think we've got everything slowly squared away. Um, hang in there. We're getting we're getting there. I see that I see the light at the end of the tunnel. So hopefully hopefully we'll start getting some of these ships out by the end of the week. If not, you know where I live. So <laughs> just drive up and get one. Yeah, just drive up and go. So drive right. through window for badgers. Yeah, curbside service. We're trying to get this house on the market next weekend, so hopefully it gets here before then. But yeah, we're trying. <laughs> yeah, what was I thinking? All right. Say good. Say good night, John. Good night. I don't have a badger, so I think I'm safe. Okay. Well, good good night, guys. Good night, James. Thank you. Sorry if it was kind of a free willing show tonight. My brain is fried. So. Take care. We'll see y'all later.